Hi YouTube. Um, this video is a combination of comments that were in reference to a discussion about the two witnesses of Revelation. Um, I have two studies that I will link under this video box um, to set the the basis of that teaching. I'm not going to repeat all that here. I'm just going to jump straight in and repeat the comments because I've been instructed to do so. Um, that it needs to reach the YouTube audience and not just the Facebook one. Um, my stand on it is not popular. That's okay. Um, this is what the Father taught me and it's not what a lot of people are, are teaching. Um, but I must stand in obedience to him. So here we go. Noah took his wife on the ark. His sons took their wives. Patterns repeat. The end ending is a culmination of all that has gone before. Two witnesses, one Adam and his Eve, measured the temple of God, the complete body of the 144,000, and from there they are fully recalibrated, the 144, to go out and operate under the same anointing to the measure that they are given. And the scripture expresses this so over and over again. Please do not lump the two witnesses into a larger unit. Everybody is now saying um, the two witnesses are a metaphor. Okay, they're a metaphor for the two sticks. They're a they are, okay, that's the thing. They are, they are symbolisms for all of those different arguments. But it doesn't negate what is going to happen. And this is to explain why it is necessary for the actual two witnesses to walk the earth. Um, it metaphorically can be applied to each individual pair symbolically to agree to a degree when the Lord says two he means two when he says 10,000 he means 10,000 and when he says a multitude that no man can number he means that we need to stay in context there are ma the manifestation they are the manifestation of the red heifer a female and a chosen goat like a, which is chosen from the two goats like I said, these symbols can be applied to each individual's walk also, but it doesn't negate the very real manifestation and personification of two real individuals for the purpose of Revelation 11, for it makes the hay, the doorway, complete. The three rods, the reed of righteousness, Christ, and the two pillars, Adam and Eve, put in perfect love, a model of the glory in the garden that only Adam and Eve can testify to once walking in it again, once remembered. The three rods of Jacob placed in the watering trough has the direct result of transfiguring the flock, the 144,000. It was the way that it was and it still is the way and it will still be the way from the beginning. The measuring of the temple and grafting of the two trees and conception of the flock are all simultaneous. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, so is my love among the daughters. That's from Song of Solomon. We still have shadows among the 144,000, each one clinging desperately to their own doctrines and cognitive understanding, jostling with one another. How does this stop? The shadows flee away the moment the three rods are placed in the water. The moment the two witnesses come forward, the jostling ends because the perf power of perfect love flees the shadow. Like the fle the shadows flee from that, from the from the manifestation of perfect love the shadows or the darkness flees away off every one of the 144,000 they are transfigured by the presence of the three rods the hay the doorway the two witnesses in agape love with Christ this is why context is so pertinent the two witnesses point us back to key details in the Old Testament the shadows the role plays and events that took place that that if you look, you can discover key pieces of information that lead to broader understanding. Like, for example, Jacob and the watering trough, which is Genesis chapter 30. After 14 years of labor, he finally transfigures his own flock to take home to the promised land. Romans chapter 11 lines up with Genesis 30 and Revelation 11. And I've got a, um, one verse from Romans 11.24. For if thou were to cut out the olive tree, that which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be not natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Anyway, that verse doesn't really matter. I just wanted to send um, the people to Romans, the whole chapter of 11, uh, because when you read chapter 11 and the grafting of the olive trees, it mirrors 
the process of what happens when Jacob transfigures the flock with the three rods. Anyway, the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring streaked, speckled and spotted. That's Genesis 30, 39. And look here, they conceived in the presence of the rods. Hmm. Where have we seen a reference to conception and birth? Apart from the conception problems being the curse upon women, which is all through the Bible, and um, I've done studies on it being a spiritual conception because even though we had the matriarchs have trouble giving, um, sorry, falling pregnant physically, the whole world hasn't had trouble giving birth physically. The world has had trouble giving birth spiritually, bringing forward the spiritual birth. Um, but that's a whole nother study. But what we will see, so apart from conception problems being the curse upon women, the spiritual conception, we will see in an instant the flock conceive en masse. And where does that connect us to? It connects us to the birthing um, in Isaiah 66. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before a pain came, she was delivered of a man-child, Isaiah 66 and 7. So let me read this. Hang on a second. I just want to point out a few more things before my phone dies. <coughs> Sorry, I'm reading off my phone. <clears throat> okay. And there was given me unto, um, given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and then that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Um, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have the power to shut the heaven, and that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have the power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. I'm not breaking down all of that. I was just requested by the Lord to share the comments that I had made and leave it and then link the the full studies that have already been done beneath. So if, if he leads you to watch those, please do so and have a blessed day.